saints above with shouts of triumph trod. By faith they like a whirlwind's breath swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him who overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. That overcomes the world. Good singing this morning. You may be seated. Good morning. Good to see everyone here this morning at Balfour Baptist Church. If you'll take your bulletins out, we have several announcements we need to go over this morning. Uh, don't forget about the COC item. Uh, it's tune in, tune a helper for this month. Youth Council will meet this afternoon at 4.30 in the Fellowship Hall with Pastor Jonah. The RBA Night of Encouragement will be this Monday night uh, here at Balfour Baptist Church. Registration starts at 6. The meeting starts at 6.30. Uh, Deacon's meeting will be this Thursday, the 18th, at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. The True Love Wake Conference starts this weekend. To those teens who signed up, please be there. They're going to talk about what God has for in store for their life and what God means to them. And we encourage you as adults to pray for our young people as they walk through this True Love Wake. I did the program myself as a youth pastor. It's powerful and dynamic for these young people to let them know where God wants them to be with their sexual purity and the decisions that they make in their life uh, moving forward. Uh, this Saturday, we'll leave at 8.15, headed to Love Life in Greensboro. We'll be taking the bus and vans. If you would like to go, it is our Saturday. We ask that you be in much prayer this week as we go to Greensboro and we pray there. Uh, Steve said there were seven there yesterday, uh, four abortions and three left, and not sure about the other one. So we praise God that some didn't take place yesterday, and that's what we're all about. Next Sunday during the 11 a.m. service, we'll be doing a baptismal service. So uh, please plan to be here for that. I think right now we have 11 so far that signed up, and if you wanted to be baptized and haven't let us know, please let us know this week. Also, we'll continue taking up the school collections this Sunday, well, no, through the 28th, so please, if you would like to donate to that, there's a box in the front of the church and back here in the middle, if you would uh, do that, it would be greatly appreciated. Newsletter deadline is uh, August 22nd. There'll be a youth movie night on August 26th at the home of Harold and Sandra Ayers. And uh, also, Pastor Gary's retirement dinner will be Sunday, September 25th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at AVS Catering up there at the event center. The cost is $10 per person. We've reserved the place for 300 people. If you would like to go, please sign up and then you can uh, send your money in the envelope or whatever and just mark it as retirement dinner. Uh, also, don't forget about the uh, 10th Annual Pray North Carolina Pray Project. They're at the courthouse. Uh, this week will be the last week on Thursday morning at 7.20 a.m. Brother Boyd Byerly will be our speaker there. Also in the back for uh, Love Life, 
There's some pamphlets if you would like to take one and see what all is going on there at Love Life. Uh, it's amazing all that they do throughout uh, the United States of America. Also, uh, my phone has been busy already this morning. Need to pass this information on to you. Hinton Poole, that is Mark Poole, Janet Poole's father-in-law. Mark Poole's father, Hinton Poole, passed away early this morning. He had been battling pneumonia, so we ask that you pray for the Poole family. Uh, also, I've been in touch with uh, Patricia Walker uh, last night, late and early this morning. Rick had a rough day yesterday, but a prayer seemed to have been answered overnight. He had his good night rest. He's off the ventilator. He's doing much better. So she asked that if we'd continue to pray for Brother Rick in that open heart surgery that was performed uh, Friday. So Rick's doing real well. Melinda Oates, she's uh, asked that we pray for her. I say pray for her husband. Um, She's taking all these classes uh, this semester, and uh, she says she's going to need prayer to get through all that. Deanna Reitmeyer uh, is home with COVID, and uh, they're going to be quarantined this week. Uh, she was on a trip and come back as tested positive. There are several people uh, throughout uh, our congregation, people we know that have been sick. A lot of it's been allergy, and I heard uh, some people even have a flu. So please remember all those folks who are sick and uh, trying to recuperate from that and those from surgeries and uh, upcoming stuff that's taking place. So that's all our announcements this morning uh, that I can think of. Make sure I didn't leave anything off because if you do, you get in trouble. And I don't want to be in trouble with none of you. So, uh, okay. All right. Right where you're at this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you uh, for all that you do for us, your many blessings, Lord. God, I'm just reminded of the, you are the great I am, that, Lord, nothing happens or, or even exists without you knowing it beforehand. So, Lord, this morning we ask that your hand would be upon the Poole family, this loss of a father, this loss of a grandfather, a brother, uh, uh, uncle, a friend uh, for the Hilton Pool, uh, Hinton Pool family. So God, just give them peace. It's wonderful to know that when uh, someone comes to the end of their life, that Father, they're born again, that they're headed home, they're home this morning, where they'll spend eternity with you. So Father, we're grateful for that. We thank you, Lord, uh, that Brother Hinton is uh, there in your presence. So God, I ask that you would be with the family, Lord, that you would help them. Lord, it's a blessing to see um, Ron Beasley in the service this morning, Brother Joe Kearns, and uh, good to see them out and about, and Lord, how you have helped and how you have blessed there in their needs. And Lord, to uh, our teachers uh, this week, if we met with some of the principals locally, uh, our teachers will be headed back to the classroom. Some have already gone, even our students, even our athletes. Father, I pray for the bus drivers, the custodians, the cafeteria workers, all of them, Lord. Lord, as summer's coming to an end and the school year is kicked off, God, I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit would be there in the schools, protect our children and our teachers and all those that are in administration there. So, God, we ask also that you would be with those who are in the hospitals, those who are in the nursing homes, those who are in um, assisted living. That, Father, that you would touch them, help them. Be with their families as decisions are being made, Lord, on what to do. And, and Lord, I'm, again, humbled and grateful for your touch for my family. Uh, getting excited about this granddaughter that will be here around Christmas time. So, God, I ask that you continue to bless uh, my daughter-in-laws, especially Jessica, who's uh, never been able to have a child before until now. So, God, to you be the glory. It is about your touch and who you are. So God, continue to form this child in the womb, Lord. I ask and pray, Lord, that when the time comes that she'll be born, and Lord, that you'll be glorified in all of that. God, I'm grateful for our youth and the things that they've been doing and the difference they make throughout our community and how Jonah has been busy all summer with our young people. And as that schedule continues to fill up for the coming fall season, that, Lord, that you'd give discernment there. 
Lord, we're grateful this morning that we're able to come in this house, the house of God, to worship. We're grateful that we live in a country where we have freedom of religion, to where, Lord, we can come in and give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, I'm grateful for John Glass. I see him this morning. He had been to Kentucky uh, up there uh, since the flood, so it was good to see him back in the house this morning and that if you've been with that core group that went up there. So, God, give us grace. Give us mercy. Uh, Lord, may we be the light and the salt of this world that you've called us to be. So come, Holy Spirit, have your way. We ask that you anoint our shepherd from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, that, Lord, this message will be that ordained by you where you'll be glorified. And, God, we can lift our eyes to you and give you thanks. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Remember, folks, Jesus loves you. He really does. And don't forget, right after the service, we have to vote on a few things with our uh, deacon vice chair, Gary Brown. Well, in keeping with our theme of faith and trust in God, we're going to sing a new little chorus. You may be familiar with it, maybe not. It's called, I Just Keep Trusting My Lord. And we'll probably sing it through twice just so we can get used to it. Let's all stand and sing together, I Just Keep Trusting My Lord. Just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord and he gives us all. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail. Such a faithful friend, I can count on him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky or the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting my Lord. He will never. of you have heard that before i was just curious how many of you anyone ever heard that i did a great job for it being new let's sing it one more time okay i just keep trusting my lord as i walk along i just keep trusting my lord and he gives us all though the storm clouds darken the sky this morning turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and we're going to look at a verse of scripture there that uh, we'll start off with. I hope all of you have had a good week. It's good to have some of our people that have been a little under the weather start to feeling better and, and again it's a blessing today to see those who have not been able to be here the last few weeks to be back to be reminded of the power of God and how the Lord works and moves in our lives and uh, I'm very grateful today. To be able to stand up here and to preach the word of God and to be able to share with you. Now today our message is going to be on the shield of faith. And uh, 
Dwight, if you'll just bear with me for a little while, um, I've got a few things that I want to share in the introduction, and then we'll get on to the outline, so uh, I'll make sure that he knows that, and uh, when we read Ephesians 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 16, then he'll know that we're on, on cue. But today, before we talk about the shield of faith, you know, I started to bring the old police shield that uh, J.D. Bullock gave me back in the early 80s that I carried in my car, and I've actually got it at home, and um, it's just made of plastic, but it would be a shield to show you, but today I want to talk about a different kind of shield, and that shield is about the shield of faith, and, and before you can understand about the shield of faith, you need to have a kind of a basic understanding, uh, and I hope all of us do, about what faith is. Now, faith means belief, firm persuasion, assurance full conviction, faithfulness, a belief that is rooted in the mind, but faith is based in the heart. So we can know about it, but it's got to be based in our heart. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance that the Lord is working, even though we can't see it. And we're going to talk about that a little bit at the very end of the message today with a story that I got this week. Faith knows that no matter what the situation, our lives or someone else's lives, that God is working. We've got evidence of that today with folks that are back in the house of God. With Joe Kearns today, after standing behind his bed there at Randolph Hospital in the emergency room, and today he sits in the house of God. So so God is to be praised. To look at Ron Beasley and to know that I was over there talking with him a few months ago in that nursing home over in Thomasville and today he sits in the house of God. It's been hard to get here, but he's here. And so God is faithful today. The Bible teaches that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And that's basically found in Hebrews 11.1. 1. So faith is being certain about realities that we believe to be true that we cannot see with our spiritual eye. Yesterday my mother was struggling with one of those sundowner days and it was not good and uh, I had my hands full they came and got me and I went out there and she was angry and saying things that normally would not come out of my mother's mouth and God gave us grace to be able to calm it down but part of what I talked with her about was was knowing that the reality that there's another place that someday she'll go another place that she'll join her mother and her husband and and many other loved ones. But right now, it has to be by that faith that we hold in our heart. God's word says in Hebrews eleven six 6, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we know we must have faith. That's why it's important to have faith today as we deal with the enemy. You may ask me a question today, well, how do we get faith? And the answer is very simple. In Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by, from hearing and hearing through the word of God. So the bottom line is, it's got to be the word of God that helps strengthen and builds that seed of faith that was placed in your life. Faith is what gives the believer confidence in God's presence to access what belongs to him. And such faith is undeniable and can purchase anything from God without hesitation. All we have to do is by faith trust in him. And faith cannot function alone. It has to have us to be willing to help. We gotta work to build that faith. So today we we come to this message on the shield of faith. And I think first of all we need to understand that faith doesn't make God move. Faith is not what makes him move. All faith does is is access to what God has already done. God has already overcome the enemy. God has already overcome death, hell, and the grave. He has already won the victory today. So our faith today is, is giving us the access to victory through Jesus. Now in Ephesians 6, 16, it says this. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So today, all of us in here have to do battle with the wicked one. 
As Christians, we are all aware that we have an enemy that's called the devil who is seeking to defeat us in our worship, seeking to defeat us in our work, and seeking to defeat us in our daily lives. He's coming against every one of us and trying to do everything he can to rob us of our joy. All about us, we see the evidence of Satan's forces at work against us. And daily he seeks to invade and, and harass our innermost being in our life in order to pour in fear and distrust and, 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 and not understanding what tomorrow brings. Yesterday I received a text message from one of the pastors that are in uh, our Randolph County group and he was sharing about how in Alamance County and also in Winston-Salem there's a tax uh, uh, into our children's minds about people placing filthy material. Boy, that brought back a lot of memories. I think about when I was on that school board and about how we took a stand against one particular book and I've never been through such a mess in all my life. I got attacked every day. I had ugly things said to me. I had threats that were sent my way all over a book. And today, parents are raising up and recognizing that there's books being placed in the library that deals with how, to, how for a child to change his gender, how to go through that process about all those things, things that are not fitting for a child, a boy or a girl to have in a school library. Now there's an outcry by parents that are coming out, so I'm reminded that every day the onslaught is on to attack. And I think about how early on we attacked that here in Randolph County. And yet now it's gotten even worse. So we can see his attacks, his insults, his setbacks and temptations that he lays for all of us. In this great passage of scripture found in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul spiritualized the various pieces of armor. And we've talked about this the last two or three weeks by a Roman soldier that was preparing to go into battle. The apostle Paul asserted that we need to do more than profess our faith in Christ, that if we want to live victorious in the world against evil, we've got to pick up the shield of faith that God has provided for us to have. So that's what we have to do. We are instructed to put on the equipment of our Heavenly Father that He provides in achieving that victory. And it's not God's will that we live in failure and live in lives that are racked with fear and trembling of what tomorrow may bring. Paul tells us that above all else, we should utilize the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. I'm reminded in Psalms, verse 28, verse 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. So I'm telling you today, folks, every single one of you, regardless of what your age is, no matter how young you are or how old, we need that shield of faith in these days to be able to carry with us to be victorious. Amen. Now, the Roman shield uh, was a rectangular and, and uh, was formed of, it was, it, was about, uh, it was formed of pieces of brass that were laced together with leather. And the shield was fairly large. And it's the exact same size of the shield that I was going to bring today. But it's two and a half wide, four and a half feet long. And basically a soldier could have got behind that to protect himself from the flaming arrows that would be shot to protect his body, his entire body. Now the faith that Paul refers to is not the body of a Christian. And it's not Christian doctrine, but it's a basic trust in God. This morning, the shield of faith that you'll pick up is your trust in Almighty God. Do I truly trust Him as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Do I truly trust Him as we deal with sickness and, and disease all around us? Does a Rick Walker truly trust Him as he lays up there battling for his life and it's good to hear good news coming out of there? Did Hinton Poole truly trust Him as he walked in to death's door. Folks, that's the challenge that we all have today. The believer's continual trust in God's word and his promises to us are necessary to protect us from the temptations and the snares that Satan has set for all of us. 
Now, all sin comes from when the victim falls to Satan's lies and his promises of pleasure, of rejecting the better choices of obedience and blessings. I remember a long time ago that I was, it was kind of drilled into my head to obey is better than sacrifice. That means you got to obey what the Word of God says. That means you got to trust Him. Now, the devil's temptations are likened to flaming arrows shot at us by the enemy. And there's not a one of you in here today that don't have those same arrows in some form or fashion that are shot at you. These arrows were often dipped in pitch and they were set on fire and before they were launched toward their enemy, to be struck by an arrow that was dipped in pitch and that was on fire was brought great devastating consequences and oftentimes would bring death and survival for the soldier was dependent upon him holding that shield to shield off those attacks. Now, what is the shield of faith that we can use today to protect us from the flaming arrows that will try to destroy us? All of us are seeking those shields. All of us need those shields. And our problem in our seeking shields is that we also often concentrate on things that really don't protect you spiritually. For many people in this building today or, or out listening that, that would be out on the airways today, many people that live in Ashburn and Randolph County, the state in this nation, we think property is a shield of great value. I remember that uh, especially with uh, my wife's father, he told me one time that back in his day coming up that if you had property, if you had land, it was something that you could hold on to. And those were a shield for protection. Then we think about an ample flow of cash. That all of us need money to make it. Everything is about doubled. But if you had an ample flow of cash, for many it's a shield against what this world is bringing right now with the gas prices, food prices, and everything else that's going sky high. And of course there's insurance. Insurance serves as a shield against catastrophic events, things that will come into your life. If you don't have insurance, you could be ruined. So we see those as shields. But folks, today the shield that we have and got to have is of a spiritual nature, that we must have the shield of God that we can carry with us because these things do nothing to protect us spiritually. However, we find that Paul, he wasn't thinking about the physical. And all of you know that Paul's been through all kinds of things in his life. He went through all kinds of things where it was not easy. He was beaten and he was at sea and all these things that happened to him. He was jailed and spit upon and scoffed at and all these things, stoned. All these things that come against him. And he carried with him the shield of faith. Now today I want us to to think for just a moment about what Paul went through in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 24. He says, If the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one, and thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, perils in the wilderness, and in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, and beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches." So as you can see here, Paul is telling you, I've been through it. I know what I'm talking about. And I couldn't have made it without the shield of faith. Now it goes on, it says, who is weak? I am not weak. Who is offended? I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Artius, the king kept the city of Damascus, a garrison desirous to apprehend me. 
and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped of his hands. Folks, I don't know that you'll ever experience anything like the Apostle Paul did. I don't know that you'll be beaten and shipwrecked and all those things, but Paul was giving you all that to let you know that through all those things that came against him, it was that shield of faith that God gave him to tell you about this morning that you must utilize and pick up. If you'll notice there, it says, you know, as we think about that verse of scripture there, it says, above all, all the equipment, take the shield of faith wherein you shall be able to quench the fiery darts. That means you've got to reach down and literally take your faith. You've got to put it into practice. It's not easy. Toppy, it's not easy when you stand by the side of your husband and you don't know what's going to happen, is it? So where do you turn? You've got to enact the shield of faith. You've got to say, God, I'm trusting in a God that is greater than anything this world has to offer. Lord, I'm trusting in a God today that has promised that there is no power in hell and no power on this earth that can ever separate me from my relationship with God. Amen. There is nothing that can come against me that God can overcome. And folks, we have to pick that up and hold that just as a soldier going into battle. You've got to be able to go into battle knowing that I am picking up and putting into practice my faith today in order that I might be victorious. Amen. Male or female today, whatever you go at, that's what we have to do. Now, when you think about these flaming arrows, they're designed to destroy our spiritual lives. We're talking about Arrows that the enemy will shoot at us. Now, there's one thing for certain. Every single one of you in here, starting with your preacher, are going to experience those flaming arrows, arrows shot at you. And so you've got to be prepared. Listen to a few of these. And maybe they apply. Maybe some don't with you. But we will face the fiery, fiery arrow of temptation to do evil. He'll try to lure you every way he can. We will be tempted to live an immoral life. He'll try to pull you away from the God that you love. We will be tempted to live for secular materialistic values. He'll try to get you to be like the Joneses and to feel like that I've got to have this insurance I've got to have this cash money, and I've got to have property. I've got to have things. Everybody else has got them. I need those things. He'll try to draw you away with that. We will face the arrow of doubt that leads to disappointment and despair and depression amongst many of our people. Even now as I speak, there's folks that, that are members of Balfour Baptist Church that are experiencing depression in their lives because of hard things that the enemy is shooting at them. We'll have the fiery arrow of discouragement. And we'll be accused of not being all that we should be and slander our character, cast doubts on our personalities and remind us of our past failures. When the bottom line is this, that every single man, every single woman that is in the house of God today we're on a road to hell. The Bible says we were all sinners in need of a Savior. And God miraculously came through Jesus Christ, died on that cross, shed his blood, has set you free and redeemed you from the pit of hell. And it's a lie of Satan that he tries to drag you back into thinking that I'm no good. I had a man come up to me at the cafe yesterday morning. Something told me to go get something to eat. I get hungry from time to time. I went down there and I watched them boys eat an omelet the other morning and I had to about mortgage my house to buy it. But I got me an omelet and I sat there and eat. And I had a divine appointment with a man. He came over to my table and he introduced himself and he told me, he said, I listen to you every Sunday. He said, I listened to him last week. And he said, I, I sure get a blessing from both of you when you preach. And he said, I just want you to know you're making a difference in my life. And he said, I've thought about coming up there. And I said, well, why don't you come on? Why don't you come on up there with us? Come tomorrow. And he said, you don't understand. He said, the doors will set on fire when I walk through them. You know what that is? That is a lie from hell. That is a lie from the devil because there ain't a single one of us in here today 
starting with your preacher, that is worthy to stand up here and have life. But God granted us freedom, granted us victory, took our sins and put them under the blood. And all of us, those doors are open to anybody that desires to come in and to receive the word of God. And I'm praying that that gentleman who is a wonderful guy, good fella, no different than any of us here today. I'm praying that God will draw him by the power of the Holy Ghost to the house of God. I pray that he listens today. And I pray today that he will give him that peace that he needs in his life. So again, that's one of those fiery darts that Satan will throw at you. I'm not good enough. I've had some say that well, I can't get baptized preacher. I'm not good enough to get in those waters. I tell you one thing, it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for you. Jesus died on that cross for your sins. I don't care who you are today, I don't care where you've been, what you've done, that everything that you ever messed up on has been covered by the power of that blood that come off that cross. And Satan will tell you that you're not good enough, he will tell me, he'll tell me that you ought to just quit and walk away, he'll tell me that you're not worthy to be there and you're right. Devil, I'm not worthy to be here, but he's worthy. Amen. And he's worthy to be able to set us free this morning. So I want you to be reminded today, you have no idea how much God loves you. He loved you so much that he sent Jesus for you. He loved you so much that he's took everything out of the way. He's took it all away. And even if you fail today, he'll forgive that too. Nothing can separate you. Now your fellowship can be hindered by sin. Your fellowship, you can be out of line. I can get upset with Jonah, and we don't ever get upset, but Jonah could do something to make me angry. But the bottom line is, that fellowship that we have can be restored by just simply loving one another Amen. and being repentant of what we do. Folks, that's at a much higher level with God. The devil cannot take you out of his hand, and so you need to understand that. We will, flee, we will face the arrows of uh, personal disappointments not everything's going to go our way not everything's going to happen the way that we think it should be not everything's going to go like I thought it should be and so we know that those things are coming we will face the fiery darts of uh, disease and disability God why you know my mama asked me last night she said son she said why have I got to be like this why, why can't I remember anything she's so aggravated so frustrated and and it, it just shocks me for the things that come out of my mama's mouth sometimes. And I said, Mama, I don't know, but it's a path that you've got to walk down and we'll always be with you. Folks, there's some of you in here today know exactly what I'm talking about. And it ain't all about Alzheimer's. It can be cancer, it can be heart issues. Rick Walker had no idea that every single artery he had was blocked. Folks, we don't know when something's gonna ring our bell. And we know that those things are coming and Satan will use them to cause you to be despondent, to be beat down, and to think all is lost. But folks, as long as you've got your eyes on him, you've got it all. And God will see you through. So we may face the fiery arrow of personal injury. There's some of you in here today may fall from a ladder, may have a car wreck, and you don't know why. But folks, we have divine appointments sometimes where God works in our life and those things may come. So what kind of arrow is Satan pointing at you today? What is he crafting against you? Every one of you ladies today, he has an arrow crafted for you. Every man in this building today, he has an arrow crafted to shoot at you. So the apostle Paul says, what you gotta do is pick up the shield of faith and repel the attacks of the enemy. Amen. That's what you've got to do today. That's what we've got to learn. That's why this is important for us. Now, Paul declared that there is no victory dealing with evil unless we utilize the shield of faith. We cannot win without using that shield of our faith. Folks, I've sat there before uh, and some of you have heard this before, but I've sat there beside a man who is sitting there weeping, who always bragged about how much uh, 
and I hate to say it like that, but he bragged about how much he gave to the church and how many churches he started and, and, and all the stuff that's going on and, and that I did this and I did this in the church and I helped start this program and all like that. But that day I knelt beside of him as he was broken, depressed, discouraged, fearful because I feel like I'm not ready to die. The devil had attacked him with the flaming arrows of doubt. And I'll never forget that as I went down there, left the office up here at Balfour Baptist Church, traveled down to the nursing home down there to one of the apartments, and there was spiritual warfare that had to be gone on that day. I remember you could feel it when you walked in there and the devil had him down and he'll do the same to you if you don't pick up your shield of faith. You see, we all got a measure of faith. How much are you allowing it to grow? Are you allowing that to develop and to become what God would have it to be? And folks, that's for me, that's for you. That we've got to have that faith, that's how we make it. And that was a real life thing. I'm telling you, that grabbed me. I ended up doing that guy's funeral later, and I used that story with his family there. And I thought it was powerful that day, because there's people in there that needed to understand that it is a spiritual battle that we're fighting. And even when you're born again, even when you've done all these wonderful things and you've tithed, you've did all this stuff, folks, it's still basic 101. I heard it down there at the courthouse. You got to look up. Todd Daniel preached it the other day. You got to be able to look up to him. It ain't about money. It ain't about property. It ain't about insurance. It's not about where you came from or who you came out from under. It's about him and you got to carry him with you now it's through faith that the saints of old accomplished all their great things I want us to go over to Hebrews and I want us to uh, be reminded of some of these things here if you would go over with me and and uh, let's find Hebrews and we want to go to chapter 11 and I want to jump in at about verse 32 The word of God says, and what shall I say, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Japheth, of David also, of Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, and stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, and turned to flight to the, to the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, they were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So, folks, there's some people that's been through some hard times. There's some people that have not wavered. There's people today, I think about uh, in Hebrews 2, 12, 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm reminded that we must trust in him, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. Folks, we must realize that there's been many others before us that have endured some horrible things, some hard things, and yet they did it with faith because they picked up that shield. We must realize that Hebrews eleven six 6 says, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Folks, I'm telling you today, if you seek him, you'll find him. He's there. 
But you got to start by looking to him and not somebody else or some other thing. Jesus told his disciples in Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God. Balfour, I'm telling you this morning, you got to have faith in God. You got to put your trust in him. Preacher, you got to put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I think about 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Born again believers should trust the word of God and believe with all their hearts that through faith God will give them the victory over the world system that we live in right now. Listen at verse 4. It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Verse 5, which I don't think is on the board, but it says, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. I ask you this morning, have you got a hold of your shield this morning? Do you have your faith? And some of you, it's the only thing really I got that's, that's any count this morning. Is that shield of faith? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yeah. Folks, that's the only thing that matters. It don't matter about a dollar bill. That day, that man, he had all kind of money. He had been all kind of places and had all kind of positions and titles. But the only thing that mattered was Jesus, his Lord and Savior. You got to think about what Bill Applewhite told me one time in this sanctuary. He was sharing with me a a truth that he had heard over the radio of of an evangelist that was preaching. And he said, you know what? We need to get past that Jesus is my Savior. Yes, he's our Savior. But Jesus is to be our Lord. That means that everything that we do... Everything that we are and everything that we give is unto him. It's all got to be about him. So he's got to be your savior and your Lord. And I remember that was pretty powerful what he was sharing with me that day. Then I think about Jesus emphasized the use of our faith just like he did with the the apostles. They were tore up. They couldn't uh, get a demon out of a guy. And it said in Matthew 17, 19 and 20, it said, Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, and they said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. I wonder today if Jesus will say to you that this is happening to you right now and that you're getting beat and knocked around because of your unbelief. you got to get your eyes back on where they're supposed to be. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. That's Jesus' words to his own disciples. That's Jesus' words to the folks at Balfour. That's Jesus' words to the people that are listening today. There is nothing impossible with God. I've heard some people say there's no way that man can get saved. He's too rough. He's too mean. He's done too much. That's just like what the devil would say. There is nobody that is beyond the reach of God. There is nobody that can't be born again. There is nobody that can't receive the love of God if they'll just reach out to him. Again, I remind you of that verse that I read early on. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and heeding the word of God. That means you got to hear the word and you got to allow. You know, the only thing that will change you The only thing that will change me is the power of the Word. The power of the Holy Ghost working through the Word of God. That's what changes people. That's why it's so imperative that you've got to have the Word of God preached from the pulpit. That's why it's so imperative that these Sunday school teachers that will gather in a few minutes must teach the Word of God. Because it's not what we think. It's not what our opinions are. It's about what God says. Now, if we're to utilize the shield of faith and develop greater faith in God, then we've got to do one simple thing. You've got to be obedient to the Word of God. And part of that is what you're doing today. You're being obedient to come to the house. I realize that's challenging times right now. But you've got to be obedient to Him in word and deed. So what have you done with your faith that you have? 
I could turn this around on me just like you could do on those cell phones and move it around and say, what have you done, big boy, with the faith that you have? So what are you doing with your faith? And I know for a fact that there's some here, uh, I can't go into it because it's very personal things, but there's some here today that have pushed God away. They're going through a hard time, they're going through situations, and they have literally ran from God. And folks, during times like this is when we ought to run to Him and not run away from Him. So have you pushed God away? Have you kept Him at arm's distance? Have you said, Lord, I, I, want, I want you to be my Savior. But God, I'm having trouble with this, you being my Lord. I'm having trouble being obedient. Well, folks, that's where the rubber meets the road today. We've got to understand, yes, he died for you. Yes, he loves you. And he will save you and deliver you. And he'll set you free. But he expects you to follow him. He expects you to be obedient to him. And we can't expect blessings in life unless we do that. So are you trusting in yourself this morning? Are you trusting in what you think is the right thing to do? Or are you trusting in God? Last time I checked, God's got it all. And he's got control of everything. Remember those in Hebrews chapter 11 who by faith accomplished much for the kingdom of God. So by faith, trust him as you move forward for the glory of God. And whatever you do. For those of you here today that are listening, both seated in these pews and also over the way of the internet today, those who would be on the radio. Do you truly trust God? Are you truly trusting in Him? Do you have the faith that the Word of God tells us about? Is your faith growing? It's supposed to be. I had a dear friend the other day, and I'll just tell you who it is. That dear friend is struggling for his health and his life in the ICU room this morning with his heart. Rick Walker shared with me a story that was told to his father when his father was not doing well. And the question basically is this. How can you describe the faith that is and will be required in your life? I got news for you. Some of us have got some hard roads to follow. There's going to be some turns that we've got to make that, and some things that will come in our life that if we don't have the faith that is anchored in Christ, it'll be hard for us to make it. We won't make it. So how do you describe that? And the question that I want to center on as we finish this message today is, how do you know that God is on the other side when you can't see him? You ever been there? How do you know and how can you explain to somebody, why do I believe in something that I can't put my hands on? I can't see him, and I don't know if he's there or not. And I just thought this story is so simple, but y'all know me. I'm pretty simple, and it spoke to my heart. Then I ask you a question, why does a dog scratch at the door to come inside when he can't see inside? It is because the faithful master is inside that house. And he waits for him to open the door so that he can be looked after and be rewarded when that door is opened. So too is our master, our heavenly father, who always has been there. Waiting for us to scratch on the door or to call out to him. And he's waiting to open that door. You remember what Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 said? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would open the door, he said, I'll come in to him and sup with him and he with me. This morning for many of us today, God is knocking at your door saying, if you'll just let me come in, then I'll come in. I believe he's always been ready to have unbelievers and those of us that believe 
to scratch on the door or to call out to him and surrender out of faith and trust him and that in order for him to care for us and guide us through our circumstances, our situations we face in order to be victorious in spiritual battle. Folks, when you're laying on a stretcher in a bed and you don't know if you've got tomorrow, who else is there to turn to? Who else can you run to? Your heavenly father sits there and said, if you'll just call upon me. I think about all those people up in Kentucky, John, that you've been ministering to. Think about all those people. Where have they got to turn except God? They've lost everything. Lives, homes, everything they own, gone. Today, there's some of you in here that may be going through something and you don't know where to turn except to him. And that's where you got to go today. So when he shared that story with me as he got ready to go under the knife. And he shared with me this story that encouraged his father. And maybe somebody today, maybe can make that symbolism that we're like that little dog. That scratches to come inside. Today we need to call upon God. And allow him to take us into his bosom. And to hold us. Habakkuk 2.4 says the righteous will live by faith. In other words, we can't make it without faith. And to live by faith means that faith becomes the regular way you walk, the way you move, the way you talk, the way you make decisions, what you think about. It becomes who you are. It's your faith. That's why Paul said, above all. All these other things, it's your faith. Will you use your faith today to unlock the grace of God that he's waiting to pour out on you? Will you scratch at the door this morning? Will you cry out to him? Will you join me down here this morning saying, God, sometimes I don't have the faith that I need to have. God, I need you this morning to help me. I need you, Father, to pour out your grace upon me. Brother Gary, if you'll come forward, I pray that the Holy Ghost will speak to your heart. I pray this morning that the power of God would speak as I can't speak. And I pray this morning that if all of you would please stand, if you feel the Lord speaking to your heart, I challenge you to come down here and ask God to grow the faith that you have inside of you and in this time in your life to hang on to what God has for you. Let's sing, Only Trust Him. Trusting. 